So my website was built using Beaver Builder and I recently switched over to using Bricks Builder. So after six years, I finally decided to leave Beaver Builder and yeah, I'm just blown away with how good Bricks Builder is. If you haven't tried it out, you're probably not watching this video, but if by chance you don't have Bricks Builder, I definitely recommend uh, using their demo on their website. You can just go up to the main menu, go to um, demo and you can literally play around in a demo sandbox, get an idea of how it works. It, it's, it, it's incredible. Like I really think like it's the best page builder for WordPress. I'm going to leave a link to my review in the description below if you want to go check that out and see more in depth about my opinions. But what I want to do in this video is when I was converting my website from Beaver Builder over to Bricks Builder, one of the things that I needed to do is for my sales pages and opt-in pages, I wanted to disable the header and footer so that my opt-in form or my sales page content was front and center so that people weren't getting distracted and they couldn't click to read my about page. Like I just want them to, you know, fill in that opt-in form there. So I, there's two different ways that I found through rebuilding my website with Bricks Builder that you can go ahead and disable the header and footer. And there's a better way, I feel, in my opinion, there's one way that is better and more flexible and that's the per template way. And then there's a, another way, which is the per post way. So what I wanna do in this video is just go through each of them and run through the pros and cons of each. Just so if you're using Bricks Builder, you can decide how you want to do it for yourself. If you prefer written content, I've put all of the content of this video you're watching now into a blog post. So I'm going to link to that blog post in the description below. The last thing before we get into the tutorial is that we have been developing a table of contents plugin, uh, me and my developer. I tried every different tables of content plugin out there and I really feel like this is going to be the best one. Uh, if you want to see how it works, just go to my website and have a click around. It is really good for long blog posts. Like this blog post here has like, a, like I don't know, a lot of words and it's going to be like three times as long by the time I'm finished with it. And the way that this table of contents plugin works that we're developing, if you click there, you know, it shows up here. Like you can just go down all the different levels and it's, it's just user friend. It works really, really well. So I definitely recommend checking it out. And if you want to go on the wait list and be notified when we go live and open this up for sales, you can click a link under this video. You'll land on a page that looks like this one here. You can put in your name and email address. And then when we go live with the plugin, we'll send you an email. So let's get into the content of today. And the first way that you can disable the header and footer inside Bricks Builder. Okay, so which is going to be the per post basis. So we're gonna go to my demo website and then pages or pages. If we open up this coming soon page, so you can see we have the header up the top and then it says we're creating our website, our website's coming soon. And then we have our footer. So the reason that you would use this is obviously you're going out and you're building your website. And then as a result of that, you have this coming soon page. So you only want people to see this coming soon page. You want to remove the header and footer from this page. So one way to do that is to go in. So this is the coming soon page. You could edit this with bricks and then in bricks builder, you could go settings and then page settings, general, disable header, disable footer, save. And then you could preview this. And now this coming soon page on this per post per page basis, we've disabled the header and footer, but I don't really see any reason to do that versus the next method that I'm about to show you. So let's look at method number two, and then I'll explain the pros and cons of them. So method number two is going to be the per template basis. Let's go back into this coming soon page and we're going to go back to the editor and I'm just going to disable this. So we're still showing it here and I'll save. And if we view this, okay, so there's our coming soon page and we can see that it's still outputting the header and footer. Let's go back here and let's go to bricks and then templates. And we're going to edit the header and footer area. So firstly, I'm going to edit the header, er the header area. So edit with bricks. And now we're in here. And now I'm going to go to settings, template settings, conditions. And now this is going to be output on the entire website. But now I'm going to add a condition where I exclude an individual page. It's going to be the coming soon page. So exclude. So output on the entire website, except for this page there. Save. If we go back here and just uh, view this, you can see now it's not outputting the header. And if we do the same for the footer, we'll open this up. We'll go settings, template settings, conditions, add condition, show on the entire website, except we're going to exclude it on the coming soon page. Click save, back, refresh, and now it's not outputting on that page. Now, the reason that I recommend using this method is because there's going to be other uh, conditions under which you don't want to output the header and footer. So another example is if we go back to my templates and let's just say we go back to Woo funnels and then funnels and let's go ahead and really quickly build an opt-in funnel. So we'll go add new and I'll go test opt-in funnel 
panel and we'll click add and we'll go, uh, we're gonna use other cause I'll use Bricks Builder to do this. It's gonna be an opt-in funnel. So we'll start from scratch, add new step. It's gonna be an opt-in step, so opt-in and we'll click add. And then we're gonna add a new step and this is gonna be the opt-in confirmation. So a thank you, click add. We're gonna go into this opt-in funnel step. And then here I'm just gonna go start from scratch. And then here I'm gonna go edit template. And then if you're using Bricks Builder, you just need to make this default template and click update. And then we're gonna edit this with Bricks. Now let's go ahead and design our content area. So we're gonna insert a layout. We're gonna do a section and then I'm gonna keep this really basic. So we're gonna add a heading. So I'll go heading, drag that in there. So here I just said, enter your email below to subscribe to our mailing list. I'll leave the text there. And then what we're gonna do, we're going to add a button. So I'll go button, we'll add that button there. And then this button here is gonna say subscribe now. And then the link is gonna be external. And so in WooFunnels, we can just get this. This will open up a, a opt-in form in a pop-up. So I'll copy that, go back here, paste that. And now let's just go ahead and center everything. And we might just add um, some margins on top here. So 35 and let's just go ahead and, and let's just go ahead and add some more there. And then let's just give this a background color. So I'm gonna make this maybe a really light yellow. So it looks nice and neat. And let's actually make this a two column layout. So let's add a container here and then we need to wrap them all. So so we'll just go wrap container and then that's going to be good. So this is going to be like that. And then we need to get this background color. If this looks confusing, Flexbox was pretty confusing for me and I had never really used it until I tried Bricks Builder like a, a couple of weeks ago. It's really actually quite easy to get a hang of. You watch some YouTube videos. Maybe I'll bring some out if, if you guys reckon it would be helpful. Um, but I mean, you get pretty used to it pretty fast. Um, if you just give it a, give it a couple of, uh, weeks to play around with it. So like that. Now what we're going to do, again, really basic, we're going to add into this container here. Uh, we're going to add an image like that. And then this image, we're going to select an image and then let's choose an image. So we'll put that in and let's just make all this line to the right. We could do send, we'll do right like that. And I might just make this a little bit shorter. Again, just giving you guys an idea of how Bricks Builder sort of work. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. So let's save that. And then we'll just preview this. Okay. So here's our opt-in page. This is what it's going to look like. People will be able to click this. It's going to show the opt-in form and so on. So we can probably say that every single opt-in page that we build that is like this, we will want to remove the header because you don't really want to have a header on an opt-in page. You want to put out a YouTube video. You want to put a post on social media and you want to send people to this page. And all you want on this page is really this button here. You, you don't want them clicking around anywhere else because the sole reason for this page is to get people to opt in to your opt-in form. So so that's why for every opt-in page that we create, we want to hide this header. So if we have a look here and inspect the code, you can see that this is its own custom post type here. So it's not a page. It's not a post. This is the opt-in um, post type that comes with WooFunnels. So we want to remove the header and we'll keep the, uh, we'll get rid of the footer for now just to make this tutorial easier. We want to remove the header and footer for the opt-in custom post type that WooFunnels comes with. So if we go to templates and we edit our header, and we edit our footer here in the editor, we can go settings, template settings, conditions, and we just add a condition. So we add a condition. We're going to exclude this if the post type is opt-in pages. So if we click save and we go back here and then we refresh, now there's no header. If we go back to the footer and we go settings, template settings, conditions, add a condition, go down to post type. It's going to be opt-in pages, exclude, save, go back here, refresh. And now that's done. So our business business as a rule, we wanted to remove the header and footer when the post type is an opt-in page like this, because we're going to remove it for all our opt-in pages. So it wouldn't make sense to go and edit with bricks this temp, this post here, and then go settings, page settings, general, and then remove. And then you need to do that for every single opt-in page that you do. You may as well just go to the actual template, which is what we we're doing before, and just don't output the header based on these conditions here. And if you really think about this, you're more than likely going to need to do that. So if you're already in here, excluding your header and footer based on a custom post type, why not just add this condition here and then just add pages here that you want to remove it from. So individual, we're going to remove it from the coming soon page. And maybe for some reason on our checkout page, we want to remove the header as well. And maybe also on our cart page. And so now we're controlling where our header shows throughout our whole entire website from this one interface. And if I save this and we go back to templates and refresh, 
refresh, you also see the template header conditions. It shows you it's going to show on the entire website, excluding these individual pages and excluding this post type. So you can come into here and understand what's happening on your whole entire website from just looking at this one interface. So not only is it easier to manage long term because you're not going into each individual post and turning off the header and footer, but you can see at a glance what's happening for your whole entire website. So that's why I definitely recommend method number two, disabling the header and footer on a per template basis. Now let's go ahead and just finish off this funnel. So we're here under Woo Funnels and Funnels. Let's go back into our test opt-in page. So if we view this, right, so enter your email here. So let's go so let's go back and just quickly design our thank you page here. So we'll just click into this, start from scratch and we'll go edit template. And then we wanna change the template to the default template and click update and then edit with bricks. And now as a starting point, I'm just gonna go back to my opt-in page here and I'm gonna edit with bricks. And then here, I'm just gonna copy this page. So I'm gonna go to the container and I'm gonna go copy, come back here and then paste and that's pasted. And then I'm gonna use this as a starting point to just quickly edit it a little bit. So I'll get rid of that. And then we'll just center the content inside. So that's all good to go. This one, we're gonna center it like that. And then we'll say here, great, great, you've been subscribed. Let's just assume you're not doing a double opt-in. So I just updated that, great, you've been subscribed, glad to have you. So we'll just save that. Now, if we preview this, on the front end, you'll also know that now this has the header and footer. If we go and we inspect the code, you can see that this is actually a different post type. So it's another post type that WooFunnels installs, okay, which is OTY. So it's um, opt-in thank you. So if we go back to our header and footer templates, if we edit both of these now, so here for the header, we'll go settings, template settings, conditions, exclude. And then here we would add the opt-in confirmation pages. So there we go. We click save. And then if we go to the footer, we'll do the same thing. We'll go template settings, conditions, post types to exclude, and we go opt confirmation. So they're both in there, save. Now, if we go back here and we refresh, you can see that we just see this. So if we go back to our funnel, so here's our funnel and we go here. Now we can go through the entire process that we've just set up. So subscribe now, I'll put in my details. So grant my email address and then click this button here. And then that takes us to that next page in the funnel. And then back here for our funnel, if we go to analytics, we can see how many people went to our, our opt-in page, how many people filled it out and so on. And lastly, if we come back to here and we refresh, we can see that under the conditions, it updates now and we can see that the opt-in page, opt-in confirmation page. So again, we can easily see what we've just done throughout our entire website. So for more information, I definitely recommend reading the blog post as well. I'm gonna link that below. And if you are interested in getting notified when we do release our table of contents plugin, don't forget to check out that link. It's gonna be in the description below. We're not too far off going live with it. And I really do feel like it is going to be the best table of contents plugin available, especially for long blog posts. I haven't found anything like it on the market. If you're wanting to learn more about WooFunnels and what it can do, and the idea of building these opt-in funnels sounds like something your business might benefit from, which I feel like most businesses would, I would recommend watching this video next, which is how to build the ultimate sales funnel inside of WordPress. This video today touched on how to do opt-in funnels. This one here focuses also with opt-in funnels, but then adds on how to go out and build funnels for WooCommerce. So if somebody purchases from your WooCommerce checkout page, how to show them upsells and downsells, and then also how to capture their email address and send them from your opt-in page to a sales page. And if they leave your sales page, how to then send them automated emails to get them back to your checkout page and purchasing. So that's all there in there. And it really gives you a good idea of how WooFunnels work. So definitely recommend watching that video next. I'll see you guys in the next video.